It was May of 1977. I remember that day just like it was yesterday. My family and I had spent the day at Six Flags over Mid-America, which was outside St. Louis. I was with my mom, my two sisters, my brother, and two kids that lived next door to us. It was so fun. We rode all the roller coasters. We went on this new one called the Screaming Eagle. And the day was just so fun. I can't even imagine having more fun than I did that day. I remember the day ending with me walking out to the parking lot eating cotton candy. And then I remember waking up in a hospital room and looking around and wondering, what was I doing here? I remember seeing my mom sitting over in the corner by the window. And I said, Mom, what's, what's going on? What happened? She said, we were in a car accident. OK, a car accident, I thought. Scratches, bumps, bruises. I saw a cast on my wrist. But then came the moment I asked the question I'll never forget. I said, can I see myself in the mirror? She said, I need to go ask the doctor first. Now, as she walked out the door of that hospital room, I remember I saw that dumb waiter sitting there, and I decided to put my hands around it, and I pulled it forward. And as I did, I pulled this drawer out, and there happened to be a mirror in it. And I looked down at that mirror, and I did not even recognize myself. Half my nose was missing from my face. My head had been shaved. And after that look, I later learned from my mom what really happened. As we were leaving Six Flags, my mom decided to take the outer road of Highway 44. And as she did, someone who had had way too much to drink and no business be being behind the wheel of the car, was headed straight at us. Now, my mom did what anyone would do in that split second. She made a decision to save our lives, and she dodged the car over to the left, and we hit a fence, and I was broadsided. I would later learn that my family was worried I might not walk again, I might not talk again, I might not see and they were also worried that I might lose a lot of my brain functions. And the reason my head was shaved is they'd been checking for brain damage. And then came the surgeries. Now, the hundreds of surgeries I've had over the years to put my face back together and my head rewired back together after the initial accident, that was the easy part of that whole experience for me. The hardest part came later. I remember I would go into the doctor's office with my mom after the surgery, and I would look down, and any time anybody looked at me, I would say, Mom, they're staring at me. And I realized at age nine, I had zero self-confidence. And it was my first lesson about self-confidence. A few days later, I remember a gift I got in the mail from my grandmother, Mame. It was a book called Determination, and it was the story of Helen Keller. And I remember reading that book, and it was the first time I started to realize maybe I could learn how to be courageous through this whole experience. And it started to make sense. I had hope. Now, I was also still a bit of a victim, but I had some courage to go forward. My next initiation around self-confidence came when I was a teenager. I went from being a victim to a rebel. I was on a path of self-destruction. I got tickets, I wrecked cars, I got in trouble, and I was crazy. And then I got my next invitation to self-confidence. My friend Matt, who was going to school with me at the University of Kansas, invited me to this leadership night. And we signed up for this seminar called Life Spring. And I went through the workshop, and I had my second lesson about self-confidence. I realized at that age of 19 that it's not what is here that matters. It's what's here that matters. 
The third lesson about self-confidence was when I decided to get into the world of sales. Do I have any other salespeople out in the audience? Woo! All right. Well, for any of you that are not in sales, let me explain for a moment. When you're in sales, it requires an incredible amount of grit, resilience, being able to handle rejection, but that test of self-confidence came up once more. I remember one time I was standing up to give a presentation in front of hospital executives, and I froze. That self-consciousness began to creep up again, and I remember I said three sentences of my introduction, and I looked at the VP of sales across the room, and he did this, and I knew I blew it, but I was also excited. I went from almost getting fired to getting inspired. That next day, I went to my first Toastmasters meeting. And then my mom gave me a book called Awaken the Giant Within by Tony Robbins. And I read that book cover to cover, and then I decided I'm going to go to every single one of his workshops, and I'm going to get great at this. So I went from being the student, but then something else happened. I had this realization that it wasn't good enough for me to be a student because how many of you have been tested with self-confidence in your life? Anyone? We all have. And I began to see that there was a reason that this continued to come up in my life. I felt I had a calling that I needed to not just be a student and good at self-confidence, I needed to be a rock star and be able to teach it to other people. So I created something called the Sales Confidence Code. And I began to realize that going to this class about thought habits, it was interesting and it was fascinating, but I thought, what if I could get so good at this that I could start teaching this to other people? And that's exactly what I did. And the first thing I'd like to share with you, my friends, is that none of us in this room are broken. The real issue is that we have thought habits that are out of alignment. And as we begin this weekend together, what I'd like to do, we're going to go through all six habits that will help you develop that confidence I'm talking about. But today, I want to start with the first habit because I believe this one is the most difficult to master. And from my life experience, it's the habit of self-confidence, self-worth, and self-esteem. So if you want to take a couple notes, I'm going to give you this acronym I came up with, and I'm going to share with you right now the five killers and solutions to self-confidence and these are so simple that you can apply them to your life immediately starting today and have some breakthroughs. The first one that I'd like you to consider is, the word is begin. So if you want to write on a piece of paper, B-E-G-I-N, begin. B stands for be in the now. I have a confession to all of you. I spent most of my sales career is a workaholic, and I think I'm still recovering from it because all I did was work. I worked morning, I worked afternoons, evenings, all weekend long. I would think about the sales and if this was going to come in or not. There was constant stress and pressure. But it also ended up costing me my marriage. And what I came to realize is that instead of working, why not practice being? And instead of being focused on the past, what happened before and the guilt and the shame and, and feeling bad about things or being worried about the future and what's going to happen next, why not enjoy this present moment? Because this moment is the only moment we all have. None of us are guaranteed tomorrow. The next thing I'd like you to consider is E stands for eliminate expectations. Expectations are the biggest killer of joy in our journey. It's when we say, my life looks like that, but it should look like this instead. And the way that shows up is, have any of you lost a sale before? <laughs> okay, yes. <laughs> I remember one time early in my medical sales career, I had this big sale that was worth $6 million. It was a huge health system. I was so excited. I thought we were going to win. And guess what? We lost it. My confidence, again, was challenged, and I remember going through my mind and replaying it and feeling terrible about myself, but then you know what I did is I said, what is good about this? What's good about it is that I learned 
what am I going to do different next time? Maybe next time I'll do more discovery. Maybe next time I will find out more what the customer's needs are before I present a big proposal like this. The next stands for G is gifts versus trauma. I think if I looked around this room right now and asked you all if you've ever had a traumatic event in your life, I think every one of us could agree we have. Let's think about COVID for a minute. There is a gift in every challenging event that happens to us. COVID was definitely a test. What happened though is for me, I noticed at that point in my life, I was a corporate sales trainer and we were scrambling. What are we gonna do to keep these sales reps motivated? Oh my gosh, everybody's staying at home, they're not selling. And what we started to do is I started to develop coaching groups and we started to work on these habits together. We kept everybody motivated. So I found the good during a bad time and I made something out of it. I stands for I choose me. I choose me means I'm gonna stop comparing myself to everybody else in the world. It's a no-win game. Instead of comparing yourself to others, ask yourself, what are my gifts? And the last is N. N means no more secrets. Live your truth. Is there something you need to start? Is there something you need to stop? Is it time to say, let's get going or let's end this? But what we do instead sometimes is we numb our mind to those secrets. We binge, we watch Netflix, we do or take things to make us feel better. It's never the right answer. I wanna share with all of you that our life experiences can be our greatest asset. And the story that I shared earlier all came full circle for me about three years ago. I was with my girlfriend, Elizabeth, and her two kids and we went to Six Flags. And as we were leaving Six Flags, I remember I had this wave of intuition and wisdom rush through my body. And I said, Elizabeth, I think I know the reason I was in that accident when I was so young is because had I not gone through that accident, I wouldn't have learned the courage, the determination, and the personal power that I have today. And I wouldn't have the desire to serve people the way I do today. So remember, your life experiences can be your greatest asset, and your life experiences can be your greatest gift. Welcome to the best version of you.